Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Rick and Morty Season 4 released an official trailer for the first half of its season, coming November 10th, with presumably the second five episodes coming early 2020, and we are back diving into this delightfully f***ed up universe of universes for all the hidden animation details, references, callbacks, all the jokes to bring you in on the inside jokes and feel like less of a... I'm going to break down this trailer shot by shot to get a sense of what episodes we might be looking at, what subtle jokes there are already sneaking in there, and what insane theories we might have just gotten confirmed. Spoiler warning in case any of my speculation is too accurate and that ruins your life. Let's get started. Okay, the trailer opens on Rick's ship swooping into this picturesque planet, the same one from the animation still that was released last summer. If you look closely, he appears to be alone in the ship, meaning this is likely a different moment than the next shot that shows Rick and Morty entering this Raiders of the Lost Ark style temple. Notice the spike traps on the ceiling, the circular patterns on the floor, probably where more spikes will shoot up as they walk over them, just like they did on Indy. Now later, they'll zip on these protective suits to block the darts that shoot out of the walls. I'm wondering what those statues are. Maybe it's the statues' backpacks, but part of me is wondering if whether these could be like ancient Morty statues, like maybe some ancient cult of interdimensional Mortys from an older time. Oh, and by the way, the music throughout this trailer is the EDM beats of justice, the tracks of Genesis and Stress. Next. Next, Morty runs with Chachi, a blue cat creature, away from these tongue slug looking guards, and they're bringing something back in his backpack for Rick, and then Chachi's head is blown open. I like how the animators dangled his tongue out. They also frame Rick through Chachi's wound hole. They've done a similar shot before, like when Rick lasered the guards in the head in the Pickle Rick episode. Moving on to this shot of Morty scaling up a cliff wall while Rick floats beside him in a hover chair. This is an homage to the scene in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, the best of the Star Trek movies. Just if it's not. When Kirk climbs El Capitan in Yosemite and Spock floats up next to him in hover boots, just like Morty does, Kirk falls, Spock swoops down to save him. We'll see if Rick's is nice. Actually, if you look closely, you can see the reason Morty loses his grip is a little critter that crawls out and pokes or bites his hand. When Rick's fast food bag floats by, you can see that it is an Arby's bag, adding Arby's to Carl's Jr. and McDonald's as Rick and Morty fast food chain cross promotions. Let us see how many fans lose their minds trying to get a limited edition Rick Roast Beef or whatever it is. Then Rick and Morty try to mine these blue crystals out of a geode before ending up in a shootout. Then Rick and Summer are nearly incinerated by dragon fire. And that's the end of the Morty gets a dragon experiment. Are you gonna slay it? First off, I always slay it, queen. Secondly, yes. <laughs> Rick sounds like he's channeling his inner RuPaul there. And assuming Morty does have a dragon, I'm wondering if one of the episodes could be a D&D episode that deals with magic. Now, as a scientist, Rick has always been skeptical of magic, as we saw in the Something Rick It This Way Comes episode in season one. But later this trailer, Rick Summer, Morty do appear to be in a kind of D&D style cave scenario. Summer looks like she's dressed up as some kind of D&D character. Rick finally embraces magic. You know what, you're right. I could get used to this magic stuff. Now, if you look around this dungeon, you can see a skeleton of some creature caged up above them. Wondering, this could be a dragon skeleton like the ones in the Red Keep of Game of Thrones. Given Rick and Morty's past trolling the Game of Thrones, post-final season of Game of Thrones could be a wonderful time to get some more jokes in. Rick uses this magic device to turn an enemy into a football, which he punts, and then the next enemy into a flower vase. Now, this could be a nod to The Hitchhiker's Guide in the Galaxy, one of the many influences on Rick and Morty's sci-fi absurdism. There's a moment in which the missiles are randomly transformed into a sperm whale and a bowl of petunias. Curiously, the only thing that went through the mind of the bowl of petunias as it fell was Oh no, not again. Moving on through the trailer, we also get the return of Mr. Meeseeks's looking delighted as they riot and destroy his city street. Presumably their task is a more long-term one like destabilizing society, which is why they aren't screaming existence is pain right now. Since their amazing introduction in the season one episode, Me Seeks and Destroy, a few Mr. Me Seeks have popped up here and there, like in season two, in the background of Blips and Chits, and in season three, in a cage in one of the Morty's mind blower memories. Then there's this wild shot of Beth and Summer melee fighting on an airport tarmac. Beth with a broom and a trash can lid, Summer with a golf club, presumably taken from the clubs on the luggage rack back there. There's a huge hole in the glass on the walkway above. Who knows what the hell's going on here? But Next up, there's a shot of Morty taking down some bullies with bats. There's one stuck in some goo, another sucked into an orb-like device. Actually, that second bully might look familiar to you. He was one of the assholes that Summer and Rick beat up in the X Gonna Give It To You montage. The one people thought looked like Randall from Recess. The cop pulls up and radios in. We've got an Akira type situation going down behind the mall. He's referencing Akira, in which the government experimented on kids to create super soldiers, but then one of them, Tetsuo, becomes too powerful, just like Morty here. And if you look closely at Morty, he has some glowing device 
face on the side of his head. Now, some are saying this could make him Evil Morty, but as we saw in season three, Evil Morty is now president of the Citadel. I'd imagine he'd have some bigger plans in his mind than like bully revenge. So perhaps this Morty is being like remotely controlled or maybe just not fully in control of his own actions as he has been weaponized. But next there's a shot of this monstrous head being melted with acid. Kind of looks like mutant Jerry to me, but whatever this is, it has like this kind of fungal growth and a second mouth and a second set of teeth inside its main mouth. Its whole appearance and the noise it makes as it melts evokes the alien from John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> could be connected to that cloning microwave that Rick has in the garage in which human flesh comes out looking kind of raw and primordial like this. And then Rick gives Morty the salve. Let that salve sit for 10 minutes or you'll die. Don't let it sit for 12 or I'll have to hunt down what you become. In the episode's final clip, we see exactly what Rick will have to hunt down as Morty morphs into this demonic beast. <laughs> Morty, what did I tell you? I'm thinking this all could have started with what Morty was suffering from in that other clip. I'm dying, Rick. People who are really dying don't keep uh, bringing it up. Is that true? I don't know. I'm just usually around people that die faster. Notice that snake in the astronaut-style spacesuit with a broken helmet. This space snake must have bitten Morty and poisoned his bloodstream maybe leading to him turning into this demon. Okay, moving on in the trailer, there's a shot of Jerry and Morty crashing into a room with a bunch of red armored soldiers based on Jerry's stupid tracksuit. This is most likely the episode with Taika Waititi voicing Glutey from that clip shown at Comic-Con. Glutey helps Jerry develop a dating app called Love Finders, the two R's because Jerry. In that clip, Morty tries to shut down the app and the Glutey hints that the server is on the mothership, which is coming. So presumably this is the mothership and these soldiers whose feet look just like Ludi's feet, are using Jerry's app maybe as a homing beacon to come attack the sad single people of Earth or something. Next, there's a shot of Rick and Morty entering a kind of fan convention hall. There's a few familiar background characters present, including Arcade Alien from the Morty Night Run episode. Holy sh this guy's taking Roy off the grid. This guy doesn't have a social security number for Roy. A few others from Blips and Chits are at this convention as well. There's also a three-boobed alien like Jerry's girlfriend Kiara last season, both a nod to the three-boobed woman of Total Recall. Rick fade shifts through a security guard by touching the inside of his lab coat, which then uses in another great move. Lab coat, rip off Dr. Strange. What? Rick is referring to Dr. Strange's cloak of levitation. Fun bit irony since Dan Harmon consulted on the script for the Dr. Strange film, even though they didn't use a lot of his ideas. Rick as a character seems weirdly aware of other dimension hopping doctors of pop culture. You don't know what I can do. It's, it's, it's cool, Rick. I'm Doctor Who in this mother Later in the trailer, Rick and Morty will zip up from this convention hall to a ship on the roof. As they blast off, you can see that this is a heist convention, thus why fans can be seen on the roof tearing up pieces of it and heisting them, I guess. Morty's wearing his red backpack here, so this heist could be part of that same episode where Chachi dies. Maybe this will all be Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon's commentary on fan convention culture, something they know very well. Before I continue, and you big thanks to Mac Weldon for sponsoring this breakdown. Mac Weldon makes great clothing with smart design and premium fabrics while making the shopping process real simple. Like I picked up this silver knit polo and it was super easy to find the right size and just place the order. And you know what? This shirt plus the cozy underwear that I'm not gonna show you, that's Voss After Dark exclusive. But all their stuff, their socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, sweatpants, it is all super comfortable. Now it doesn't have the cloak of levitation power that Rick's lab coat does, but it does trick the eye into giving me shoulders. So it is, in a way, magic. These clothes are great for wearing at work like this shirt is, but also they got stuff for everyday life and for working out, for going on dates with your partner who definitely exists, and if not, will soon because you look great in your new Mack Weldon shirt. And Mack Weldon is giving you guys 20% off your first order. All you gotta do is visit MacWeldon.com and enter the promo code NEWROCKSTARS, that's one word, or click on the link in the description. And again, that's promo code New rock stars. Okay, back to the trailer. Mr. Poopy Butthole returns, perhaps now Professor Poopy Butthole, in a college lecture hall. Now, whatever he's lecturing about is really setting off these hipster students who ninja down to him and attack. He uses his cane, kind of like Galahad with his umbrella and the Kingsman. Actually, if you go frame by frame, you can see each of these dudes spewing out blood when Mr. Poopy Butthole takes him down. My guess is that this episode could feature Mr. Poopy Butthole as a professor who says something offensive during a lecture and then gets attacked by all the triggered students. Maybe even the rioting Mr. Meeseeks are an extension of the rage of these students. Then Rick fights a rock monster, which could be set in that maybe D&D episode I mentioned earlier. 
spinal cord, activate morphine. The fact that Rick has morphine in his spinal cord? Yet another component of a cybernetic skeleton that we have seen glimpses of before. This might clue us into how Rick has been able to withstand so much pain. Next up, an insane shot of Rick piloting his ship with Nazi Morty, fighting a Meeseeks, triggering a German Luger pistol to kill, also recurring minor character Gearhead. Yeah, I couldn't even begin to speculate on what is going on here. My guess is that this could be one of the random nonsensical clips that play in the new opening credits. And then, finally, there is what I consider to be the oddest moment of the trailer. You know what? This one counts as one of your adventures. Okay, here's what's weird about it. This Morty adventure card is a callback to the season three Vindicators episode. I, Morty Smith, invoke my right to choose one in every 10 Rick and Morty God. adventures. Read them in Damn it. Fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. That card already got its 10th stamp. Now, I would say Rick could have given Morty a new card and then they've already gotten through that second one, but the orientation of each of the stamps is exactly the same. In fact, this is the same exact animation cell as that season three episode, with Rick's helmet device off to the right, minus the slugs that they were trying to catch in that scene. This could be evidence of the popular theory that many of the Rick and Morty episodes are actually showing us different Ricks and Mortys from throughout the infinite multiverse. Multiverse. Some have pointed out that at least one switch occurred during the Morty Night Run episode when Jerry left the daycare center with a different Rick and Morty than the ones he and we arrived with. And then in the following episode, Total Rick Hall, the green rocks that Rick scavenged in the Morty Night Run episode are seen when Rick throws them away in the garbage, with those pink crystals being revealed as a source of the memory virus that plagues the family in that episode, suggesting that everything from then on in the series is at least one new Rick and Morty. But in general, the idea is that every episode represents represents chaos, and the multiverse of Rick and Morty is the writer's meta-commentary on episodic television. So returning to the stamp could be the same kind of thing. Perhaps we'll see a Rick and Morty in a different dimension go on a slightly different Morty chosen adventure than that Vindicator's experience. If you remember, one of the pieces of concept art for the season showed Rick with the people of the Vindicator Crocubot. Perhaps that could be connected with this slightly alternate adventure. What are you most looking forward to about Rick and Morty season four? Comment down below with your thoughts. Now, with Rick and Morty returning, I am hoping to resume our weekly breakdowns of all the hidden animation details in each episode. Also, big announcement here, we have gotten a blessing from Dan Harmon himself to do an official Rick and Morty after show to discuss each episode's deeper agenda with special guests. But in case you hadn't heard, we are temporarily sort of homeless here at New Rockstars, and we are rushing to finish construction for our new project, New Rockstars Digital Studios, so it's just gonna be tough to keep up with all this Rick and Morty content that we are eager to bring you guys. So to help us expedite this by the time season four premieres, it would really, really help us if you could become a patron of NRDS. For your generosity, you'll get access to bonus content, including a monthly exclusive premium breakdown that I guess I'm gonna have to find time to do, and you'll help us create this place where we can nerd out on Rick and Morty together every week. So if you are able to help us out with that, please click on the link in the description below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Thank you for joining me, and for any Rick and Morty fans out there who insist on hate watching, every YouTube video about it and snarking in the comments that the host isn't the right kind of fan like you are, much obliged.